The Green Rush is real. From lawmakers and investment bankers to CEOs and investors, we'll look at how people are transforming cannabis from the shadows of the black market into a cash crop that draws in cannapreneurs from Hollywood to Wall Street. Here to help you navigate the business of cannabis, please welcome Lewis Goldberg and Ann Donahoe. Brought to you by KCSA Strategic Communications. Welcome to The Green Rush. I'm Lewis Goldberg, and as always, am joined by my partner in crime, the Queen of Kush, Ann Donahoe. While we are recording this on April 6th, you are listening to this hopefully around April 18th or definitely later. Why do those dates matter? Because today, we are speaking with the CEO of Acreage Holdings, Kevin Murphy. If you aren't familiar with Acreage, they are the largest multi-state operator in the United States. Founded in 2014, Acreage Holdings, formerly known as High Street Capital Partners, has the most diverse portfolio of companies of any American cannabis company in the industry. They have cultivation, processing, dispensing operations across 11 states, and let me tell you, they have a lot of plans to expand. Murph in his own right, comes to the cannabis industry from the financial services space. He helped found Stanfield Capital Partners and was central in growing the organization from inception to a $30 billion alternative money management firm. Acreage just announced big news with the addition of former Speaker of the House John Boehner and former Massachusetts governor and vice presidential candidate for the Libertarian Party in 2016, William Weld, to their board. Now, listen, this is huge news. If you haven't read the story in Business Week, go out and find it. We will actually put a link to it in the show notes. Um, But this announcement is shocking to the industry for two well-known conservatives to have publicly aligned themselves with not only the pro-legalization movement, but a very specific actor in this space. Um, So without further ado, here is our conversation with Kevin Murphy. Kevin, welcome to The Green Rush. Lewis, thank you very much. I'm pleased to be here. So you guys, big news this week, or with the announcement of of Speaker Boehner and Governor Weld joining your board. Can you tell us how this came to be about? Well, I'll tell you, Lewis, I could not be more um, thrilled and frankly, more proud to, uh, to be aligned with both the speaker and the governor. Um, Two world-class men um, that, frankly, I had the very good fortune of meeting um, through other very close friends of mine. Um, And given the fact that they are uh, both um, potentially viewed as a little bit more conservative, given that they're um, Republican, uh, Hmm. they've really both taken a, a sensible approach to what we are trying to accomplish, and that is ultimately um, striving to have this uh, plant rescheduled or, um, in fact, better yet, descheduled. So um, I had met them through, again, friends of friends. Um, We quickly then became friends and couldn't be more pleased to be on this journey uh, with them together. So I have two questions. One is I want to learn a little bit more about the role that Speaker Boehner and Governor mm-hmm. Weld will be playing within Acreage. But I think before we even get to that, do you think their participation in your board will help, quote unquote, turn the Republican Party a little bit to be more in favor of legalization of adult use or descheduling? Deschedule- Descheduling, descheduling. What's the word I'm looking for there, Lewis? You, you got it. It was descheduling. <laughs> okay. Descheduling. But I was watching. I was enjoying. I was actually enjoying watching yeah. the fumbling. So you well, know, keep fun going. Flopping around on the on the on air there. <clears throat> well, um, <clears throat> I think Speaker Boehner had probably one of the better answers I've heard um, when one had asked him <clears throat> why. Speaker Boehner, are you, you know, what really was um, the defining moment to change your view of um, cannabis? And, and, and I will say that only uh, to the extent that I, too, was a little skeptical when I was introduced to the cannabis space back in 2011, 2012. 
I was asked to participate um, in the space. Um, I did not have a strong relationship with the plant at the time. Um, again, skeptical that it's something that uh, I should align my efforts with. But after learning the um, about the medicinal attributes of the, the plant itself, and frankly, uh, coupling that with, <clears throat> I think, you know, from a capitalistic standpoint, the operating leverage in the business, it had me convinced that it's something that I wanted to participate in. Um, Speaker Boehner, in turn, had come to the same conclusion that I had come to, but he simply answered it quite crisply as, um, what changed my mind is the people changing their minds. And where Speaker Boehner was a representative um, of the people uh, when he had held his um, role as the Speaker of the House, it's the people that help him decide what he needs to advocate for or not advocate for. And that is ultimately um, what turned uh, him um, from the skeptic to uh, the advocate. So what role are they going to play within acreage? <clears throat> well, they will certainly be good guides of um, where they believe we should move. Um, and I, and I, I'm looking forward to their input, not only from a board level, um, but also from an influence level, <clears throat> uh, <laughs> both uh, Speaker Boehner and uh, Governor Weld. Um, you know, having been elected officials and and both popular elected officials have developed some wonderful friendships over the years. And those friendships over the years, um, you know, have uh, built uh, loyalty amongst, um, you know, a lot of different folks that we'd love access to. And that is, I think, a real role that they will both play. <clears throat> you know, for instance, um, governor Weld, um, prior to uh, becoming the governor of Massachusetts and a wildly popular governor of Massachusetts, but before that, he was a federal prosecutor. And I think he had mentioned to me that he was involved with one of the largest narcotics busts in history. <laughs> he was a naysayer. He was one that thought that um, years ago, this is a gateway drug. But he came to the revelation that this um, drug should be uh, descheduled or rescheduled uh, and made legal. He made that discovery in 1992. Um, and <clears throat> so he was a, 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 an early adapter long before myself or the speaker. Um, but he has been advocating for it. Um, he is a very, very... Uh, popular and very, very good person. He's also um, uh, accomplished uh, executive. He had, um, after being the, uh, the governor of Massachusetts, had spent a number of years in the private equity world. And in many respects, uh, that's a big part of our business, um, not only initiating investments, but also acquiring other companies that we find attractive. So he brings that additional skill set as it relates to business and financial acumen to the table. Um, so, so these guys have they, played a role. So, so Kevin, they, they, uh, in the <clears throat> business article that just came out, um, Speaker Boehner and um, Governor Weld both said that this is it for them in terms of their, their active participation in the cannabis industry. They didn't get involved with you guys to, to, to see you stay a private company. So what are your, your capital markets plans and how does that impact what you're going to be doing over the next 12 months? <laughs> well, I'm smiling. I'm, I'm glad that they answered, uh, in that way. I'd hate to feel like I was sharing both the governor and the speaker, but, uh, you know, <laughs> <laughs> so you pass I like the fact that we're this monogamous relationship was just really makes me feel very, very special. Um, <laughs> but, but given that, um, I think that they, um, you know, I, I think it's really, uh, twofold for them. And I, and I almost hate to, 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 
speak for them, but I will, given that they're not on this, um, uh, con- and not, they're not involved with this conversation. But I and think we'll really, get them involved um, at some point in the future. We'll happy to talk. <laughs> with them. Amen. Um, but I think both men. Uh, are compassionate men. And I got to tell you, I think, (laughs) you know, this country could use a little bit more of that these days. Um, And, you know, what I love about both of them is the fact that they are very, very um, much wanting to help people uh, help themselves. And and they also want to be a part of doing away with some of the social injustices that have taken place in this country due to this plant. It's, you know, make no mistake about it. Um, for years, this plant has assisted uh, law enforcement to uh, discriminate against minorities. Uh, and to, to me, I think it's, it's frankly shameful. But that said, um, I believe, and, 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 and candidly, they believe that we are on a mission um, to, again, help people help themselves. I also believe that they are um, not wanting to be involved with an enterprise or an entity that has uh, short-term uh, uh, or small goals. Um, we have very large goals for what we hope to accomplish in this business. We are currently the largest geographical footprint in the United States in cannabis. Make no mistake about it. That, frankly, coupled with the fact that we have an uh, incredible desire to expand that footprint nationwide and ultimately someday beyond, they too have an aspiration to help uh, in that quest. Um, and it's not necessarily only for commercial purposes. Yes, um, we are heavily invested and yes, we have a lot of investors that are looking to us um, to increase their capital accounts, um, but we are also in it to have and support a robust balance sheet to have the capability to go out and uh, spend on research and um, you know, to a greater extent, clinical research. And, and Lewis, as I have stated to you historically, we would love to be on the front side of bridging the anecdotal stories to clinical stories, and that takes money. And uh, I, I've often been heard uh, said that, you know, the, the, the Lord loves a cheerful giver, but you better have a lot of money to give um, <laughs> if you want to be a cheerful giver. And that's exactly what we intend to do. So I think it's a combination of things that has uh, the governor and the speaker um, intrigued with our story. Um, and what has us incredibly intrigued about it is they will help uh, in a big way uh, with the uh, you know, in, 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 with the addition uh, to that story. I think that's a good place for us to take a quick break. We're chatting with Kevin Murphy, CEO of Acreage Holdings. More Green Rush coming up after we roll through our sponsors. Oh, let the marijuana llama tell you something now About a game for your phone gonna make you say wow The game's about the game of growing cannabis for cash Grow the seeds, sell the bud, put the savings in the stash Little by little your empire grows large Put the big celebrities inside your entourage You can choose to play with Snoop or me or Cheech and Chong Cypress Hill, Willie Nelson, Wiz Khalifa with a bong The name of the game is him pink, that's the point Download and play while you light yourself a joint the business of cannabis should be no crime. Hemp Inc. is even hot proved by the man who run high times. Oh yeah, get it on Android and I and iOS today. Marijuana Llama out. Got to tend to me on crops, you know. Money don't make itself. Hemp Inc. Strainwise Consulting is the most sought-after consulting company for cannabis business applications and management contracts. We consulted on the first recreational license in the world and have had an over 95% success rate on applications submitted. The industry is growing at such an exponential rate that building a powerful and lasting cannabis business is a number one priority. Here's Strainwise's Sean Eubanks. In our first five years, we branded and supported nine medical and recreational marijuana dispensaries and a Approximately 160,000 square feet of sophisticated and efficient product cultivation. Strainwise Consulting has the experience and expertise to guide you through the process. 
Introducing Blue Moon CBD, straight from the bluegrass of Kentucky. With our special nano emulsion process, you'll not only get the best CBD available, you'll get more of it. Not all CBD is the same. It's your body. It's your choice. Get relief from inflammation, anxiety, and stress. Go to www.bluemoonhemp.com and use code HEMP420 for a 20% discount on your order. Balance your body. Balance your life. Make it Blue Moon CBD. Chronicling the latest cannabis industry news and headlines, Dave Inman welcomes you to the state of cannabis. Tuesdays on demand, only on CannabisRadio.com. Banking and Bud, understanding the business of cannabis. Welcome back to The Green Rush, only on CannabisRadio.com. And we're back. You're listening to The Green Rush. And today we're chatting with Kevin Murphy, the CEO of Acreage Holdings. Um, Kevin, I'd like to pivot for a moment and talk about your portfolio of companies. When you had originally founded Acreage, you had this passive investment strategy. You made a decision to change that to active ownership and management. Can you talk a little bit about that change? I did. Um, uh, And and, and I certainly uh, would be delighted delighted to to, tell you how we've... transition through. Um, <clears throat> initially, again, when introduced to the space, I was a bit of a skeptic um, and you know, didn't really necessarily know how deep I wanted to go into the space. Uh, around the time that I had gotten involved in the state of Maine, which was really the first state east of the Mississippi to embrace medical cannabis, um, I had gotten involved as a large investor, uh, I, think, I believe one of the, the largest investor in it, uh, had a number of uh, folks come alongside of me to, uh, to, to co-invest. Um, but again, it was at the time just a one-off investment and um, hoping to make a little bit of money and move on. Um, and in fact, as noted, I, I was enamored with the medicinal side of it, um, <clears throat> but not to the extent that I am today. Um, Why Maine? Just to to ask. Well, Why it was, was it? The, but, <laughs> like, was it because it was, it was East first, Coast? It, it wasn't. It, yeah. was, it was the first state that was I could drive to, and that was uh, <laughs> uh, east of the Mississippi. I, you know, I and and, and I don't mean to be funny about it, it but I it was a always looked at California. It was a yeah. Well, I <laughs> I always looked at California as the the land of fruits and nuts, and I thought, eh, you know, I'm not sure what the heck's going on out there. Uh, uh, just kidding to all my friends out <laughs> in California, but we like um, our fruits and but the, the fact of the matter is that um, Maine was again the first state east of the Mississippi um, to really uh, embrace the space, um, but it was also a highly regulated space, and I, I like the fact that there were eight licenses and there weren't going to be nine and we had the opportunity to get uh, a number of them. So, um, you know, working in an environment where it's black and it's white and there's very little gray, um, gave me comfort in, you know, what appeared to be a very risky market, um, back then. Mm -hmm. So that was one of the real allures of, of playing on the East coast first, um, understanding and, 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 and a number of the other New England states watching Maine and watching how they had implemented the, sto- the, the, the program, which I think they had done it quite well, um, other states started to come online. And now we had figured, okay, well, we're one of the very few on the East Coast that have experience in the space. Let's try to couple that with our financial and business acumen and vie for these licenses. So that's exactly what we had done. Um, we participated in the process of achieving licenses in Connecticut, New Hampshire, Massachusetts, and we're very, very fortunate to prevail in all of those states. So now we were thinking, hmm, we're geographically, we've got this nice cluster. How do we continue with this? And from there, um, I started to bring on more with the workload. <clears throat> That had ultimately um, grown into a. But there was a point. Uh, there was a point company. where you, Kevin. There was a point where you looked and said, "I am willing to touch the plant." Right? Like uh, you were smart in in your desire to be passive and a little hands off and get your feet wet. But sure. 
you you said you you know acreage is the biggest multi-state operator in the country right now um Correct. so it's like was there this was there a gestalt moment can you talk about that like you must have woke oh, up and one day said i'm in well no no i i, I think honestly um was to be clear i think you know my first investment in Maine was kind of, I'm in. I mean, when we talk about touching the plant, we, we, we think of that in a, in, you know, as, you know, investing in an operation that engages in the growth, um, processing and dispensing of cannabis is, is to some degree touching the plant. So we were really more, I think, um, morphing from an investor to an operator was really more a function of wanting to rest more financial and uh, financial control and operating control of these entities that we had initially um, invested in as a passive investor. But really in both instances, we in a sense, quote, touched the plant in one way shape or form. So the way I would define touching or not touching the plant is if I'm engaged in, um, you know, growing, processing and selling cannabis, I'm touching the plant, whether I'm a financier or I am a, a bud tender. Um, uh, the, the, the non-touching the plant aspect of the business would be if I wanted to develop a, a nifty software package that all of these folks touching the plant would like to buy to monitor their uh, you know, product right. offerings or you know, making some nifty vaporizing pen that I can sell then to the market where they, they can fill their, those cartridges with either CBD or THC. So really the desire for us was to, we saw a wonderful business, we saw wonderful growth capability, and we wanted to be in now with both feet because along the way, while operating these businesses, we were witness to um, the miracles that you hear about every day with that six-year-old child going from 70 seizures a day to one seizure a month, to people finding comfort, whether it's through um, ingesting CBD or THC for multiple sclerosis or uh, cancer patients finding comfort in the plant. So it just continued to kindle our desire to be more and more and more involved, mm -hmm. not only in the space itself, but equally as important to have um, more impact on the businesses that we were investors. So um, it was really our um, desire to ultimately shape the business given its exponential growth. And that's what really incented us to transition from an, uh, an investor to an operator. So um, New York is considered to be the largest individual cannabis market in the world. They value it anywhere from two to four billion dollars is spent in the city annually. But when you think about New York, it is not the center of the cannabis universe. It's L.A., it's Denver, it, it could even be Seattle or Portland. Um, but you're based here. Have you know why are you in New York and and are are you going to stay? <laughs> Please. Well, Please. Uh, you know, Lewis, I've got to check with four others, and that's a, a wife and three kids. But uh, you know, <laughs> but Details. I think I'm going to stay, um, given the fact that um, yes, um, and I would say, and I would probably say, the epicenter uh, or the or the highest usage of uh, of cannabis is probably Los Angeles. But all of that said. Um, you know, from, from, from my vantage point, I have to be somewhere. And if <laughs> that somewhere is, uh, one place, uh, to call home, it's probably in New York city, uh, the epicenter of the financial world. And it's really the driver of, um, really our business and a lot of businesses, uh, on a go forward basis. So, we're going to have participation in LA and um, ultimately, and, you know, hopefully every uh, state that's a meaningful state in the United States. Um, so to gauge whether one is, um, 
you know, more of the epicenter for cannabis than another, you know, it's anybody's best guess, um, but we'll certainly have significant uh, boots on the ground in every location um, with, with very senior and very important people uh, nationwide. Now, um, the reason why we believe that it's so important to be here in New York is simply, um, you know, people have different views about the world of cannabis and people say, well, I've got a great extractor and I'm going to make this world-class product. So I'm going to, I'm going to excel and be very successful. Or I have a world-class grower. We're going to be the best growers in the country. Or you've got other folks maybe in the LA market saying we're the best retailers. And that's going to basically be the key to our success. Make no mistake about it. So because you're in New York, well, the key to this success is the key to this success in this business is is basically having the ability to um, access the public markets um, in, in an efficient manner and and really create an entity um, that has um, a cheap form of capital, but also but also has the ability to um, uh, through the the, the public markets um, create an organization where you can have a freely tradable uh, uh, commerce that you can go out and then barter and trade for um, uh, other assets. So we see this as uh, um, really a a great home base for us. This business is very quickly turning into one of going out and initiating um, these new businesses to um, ultimately um, buying up these uh, existing businesses. So uh, yeah, I understand that you know the the national perspective of your of your so company. So that's are- a good spot for us to go to break. Um, you are listening to the Green Rush, and we're talking with Kevin Murphy from Acreage Holdings. More Green Rush coming up after we roll through our sponsors. Cannabis concentrates have been around for thousands of years. In 19th century America, extracts mixed with other herbs were sold as a miracle cure. Now, Apex Supercritical has elevated the science of extraction into the 21st century. Apex Supercritical is the leader in CO2 extraction, which is the cleanest, safest, and purest way to extract plant oils. ROI in as little as three weeks. Our cost-effective systems are fully automated with an industry-leading three-year warranty. And if we don't have your system in stock, we can build one in as little as four weeks. Bringing CO2 extraction to the masses. Learn more at apeksupercritical.com. Four-week build excludes high production systems. Introducing 420 Cloud, ignited by MSIG, one of the fastest growing social apps around. The only app you'll need for all things cannabis. Find the latest cannabis news, videos, and stories, ranging from business and tech to sports and medicine. Start your career in cannabis by seeking, identifying, and applying for jobs through our expansive listings. For businesses, 420cloud.com features a full-scale cross-channel network, monetizing high traffic for big data conversion and analytics. Download 420 Cloud now from the iTunes Store or Google Play. MSIG.com is a publicly listed company on the OTC. Symbol MCIG. At Alternative Vibes, our core values of quality, loyalty, respect, and honesty guides us in our mission to help families find peace and harmony through our products and services. Whether you are looking for a more natural way of living, shopping for essential oils, topicals, and edibles, or searching for a path towards achieving your goals, we are your choice. Learn more about our complete line of natural products and solutions at AlternativeVibes.com. Bringing quality of living to life. AlternativeVibes.com. Our mission is to discuss extraction, processing, business practices, and lessons learned with the established experts of the extraction process on Mission Supercritical, a service of Apex Supercritical, Mondays on demand, only on CannabisRadio.com. Banking and Bud, understanding the business of cannabis. Welcome back to The Green Rush, only on CannabisRadio.com. And we are back on Green Rush. So, Kevin, you are big into martial arts. I've seen, you know, I've shaken, <laughs> shaken your hand and you have the strongest hands of anybody I've ever met. So what lessons have you taken from, from your practice and applied to the cannabis space? A little bit of ju- oh, that's juice a, on that question. It's the first time I've had that question, uh, but I've given a lot of thought to it. 
Uh, I have, as you say, Lewis been a martial artist for uh, in the majority of my life. Um, I've probably trained in the martial arts for the better part of uh, 30 plus years. And uh, it's been a, a, a real focus of mine. Uh, but I can tell you, um, over the years, I've, uh, you know, of all the martial arts that I've practiced um, and practice, um, jujitsu is clearly um, it runs exactly parallel to uh, uh, my business practices. And in, in many respects, it's a physical chess game. In order to excel um, at that particular martial art, you need to be thinking all the time. It's a thinking man or a thinking woman's game, and you have to be two, three, four um, steps ahead. It's, it's not about strength. Um, it's about um, technique and leverage. So um, how does that parallel? It's not about being the loudest guy in the room. Um, it's not about being the strongest personality in the room that's going to win the day. It's going to be about the people that are giving uh, a lot of thought to the space and a lot of um, and, and thinking ahead as to what's coming down the line. And a lot has to do with the timing and, and, and what moves you are going to make, um, you know, while um, competing um, you know, in jujitsu, very similar to business and very similar to this particular business. Um, and so in the end, um, frankly, all we're trying to do is look down uh, the road and try to figure out how we can conclude this um, and that is the best and highest value for the entity that we've created and ultimately the parallel um, to jujitsu is, you know, how do we complete and, and, and finish the fight? So um, <laughs> had never been asked before, uh, but appreciate you asking. So while we're digging into uh, the the persona of Kevin Murphy, uh, extraordinaire, can you talk about <laughs> some of, you know, and you've been an entrepreneur and you've been in finance, uh, you know, and this is an industry that is, that has its ups and downs. Can you talk about some of the biggest mistakes you've made and what you've learned from them along the way, either cannabis or non-cannabis related? <clears throat> Well, <laughs> I don't play an instrument, um, so, um, but, uh, but I wish that I, I, I wish that I did. Um, yes, I, you know, we're all, um, we're all, I guess we're all entitled to make mistakes and, uh, um, uh, I've made many. And, um, I think the one thing that I have learned from, the mistakes that I've made is to try as best I can to quickly right those wrongs. When we make a mistake or may have uh, wronged others, uh, you know, not intentionally, but maybe in uh, unintentionally, we try to right it and we try to own those mistakes. Those are, um, you know, frankly, from our vantage point, character uh, characteristics of a real winner. I also believe that, um, one mistake that I have always made is, and I, and I, and I like to couple it with one of my greatest strengths or greatest attributes is I am wildly optimistic about life. I mean, I just, every day I wake up, it's just, um, uh, it's just another amazing opportunity. And I always felt that way. And I'm not a hundred percent sure why that I have felt that way, but it just, it kind of is what it is. Um, that optimism that I wake up every day with um, sometimes does work against me. And that is I have, you know, in, in a lot of respects been very optimistic about other people and what I believed those people to be or represent. And that has really frankly put, um, you know, me um, historically in harm's way and, and frankly has, 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 has harmed others as well. Uh, there's no greater heartache than, when someone else aside from yourself, um, you know, is harmed in some way because of the optimism that I had. And that is a, uh, that's a real, real challenge, uh, for me. And we have a saying around here, you know, we, we go out and invite people 
to participate with us economically. So we go out and, 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 and engage in, in money raising and bring other people along with us. You know, I often say it's, it's, it's hard enough for us to lose our own money. It is much, much more difficult for us to lose somebody else's money. And I feel that that is the, not the same the, way. The strategy I have in gambling though. I would much rather lose somebody <laughs> else's money than my money. <laughs> and that's why there's a lot of chandeliers in casinos. My friend, someone has <laughs> got to pay for them. And that's probably you. That's <laughs> probably you, but, uh, <laughs> So now so we come I, to the segment that we do every episode, Kevin. It's called Puff Puff Pass, uh, and puff, we puff, want pass. you Puff Puff Pass, and we want you to tell us two things you love about this industry and one thing that just drives you bananas. Or you can do Pass Puff Puff, whatever's coming to your brain first. <laughs> Ready, go. <laughs> um, I love the ability to help people help themselves and have a path to. Um, prosperity. Uh, second, um, I love being a part of history, uh, really putting an end to the prohibition on cannabis. Um, that is just an absolute joy. Um, what is the greatest disappointment of this business? Um, uh, the lack of time we have it, uh, every day in our quest to be uh, as big and as meaningful as we would like to be before this business is commoditized, rescheduled, and we're then competing with Diageo, InBev, Merck, and Pfizer. So it's the lack of time that just drives me crazy. I wish I had eight days a week and 28 hours in a day. Um, just not a reality. Thank you so much, Kevin. That was a lot of fun. And we will be coming back to you regularly to, to get updates on what's going on with Acreage. Well, I'm so pleased to have been a part of it and uh, thank all of you for, for hosting me and very, very much appreciate it. Thanks again for listening to The Green Rush. Today's guest was Kevin Murphy, CEO of Acreage Holdings. To learn more about Acreage, visit their website at acreage, A-C-R-E-A-G-E, holdings.com or follow them on social media at Acreage Cannabis on Twitter and at Acreage Holdings on Facebook and Instagram. We know this may sound like a broken record, but Lewis and I really do thank you for listening in each week. Taking the time out of your busy day to listen to us chat about cannabis continually amazes us. The opportunities we have to speak with people like Kevin are a function of our audience, so thank you. And if you could, please do us a favor. Take a moment and post a review on iTunes or Stitcher. Doing so really helps others find us. Also, send us an email with questions. We want to hear from you. We can be reached at greenrush at kcsa.com or reach out to us on Twitter or Instagram at kcsa-cannabis. As always, thanks to Nick Opich our, and our producer extraordinaire, Brasco, the style, I am not saying that, Lewis, the styling and profiling one. No, nope, just Brasco, who's awesome. Thanks all. <laughs> Bye. The opinions expressed on this CannabisRadio.com program are those of the guests and hosts and do not necessarily reflect those of the staff and management of CannabisRadio.com. Any rebroadcast or redistribution without proper consent of CannabisRadio.com is prohibited.